Charles High, this is Dean Chapman and Livy Lewis here today in the Crow's Nest to talk about academics. But first, what's your Starbucks order? Um, I like the, I get the blonde vanilla latte. Mm -hmm. I also sometimes get the brown sugar oat milk um, espresso. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the pink drink and then the caramel macchiato. Wow, you have a whole collection. Yep. I bounce back and forth. Yeah. I get a venti iced chai, no ice, whole milk, and sweet cream cold foam. This is a new invention of mine, but like it's so much better than the frappuccino because it doesn't like melt because of all the water and the ice. And the sweet cream cold foam is like an inch of whipped cream that I can enjoy after drinking my chai and it's perfect. Yeah, I used to, I tried the um, frappuccino chai and I was like, ooh. Like it just did not hit. Yeah. It like made my stomach hurt, it made my mouth Your feel really stomach weird. hurt? Yes. <laughs> and it just was not a great experience. I think it's just too sweet for me. Mm -hmm. But give me all the sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can have it girl. You go ahead, you go ahead. <laughs> So today's topic is going to be all about the different aspects of actual academics during school. Not the social aspect, partially the social aspect, but for the most part, classes, how to navigate them. What do you want to talk about first? Um, well, I think that we should first jump in like how to ask for help. Like if you are struggling with um, a class, like a subject, Yeah. how to seek the right help where you won't yeah do bad right i think it also it's a personal journey for you to go on and it's something that you need to understand yourself of like how do you do school mm -hmm. and what resources and what tips and tricks are going to help you the most because not everybody learns the same way and as much as public school is going to want you to fit this cookie cutter aspect of how to learn, it's just not true. And, you know, unfortunately, you're going to have to figure out your own way of how to fit that quote unquote cookie cutter mold. Right. I was going to say the exact same thing, like about how you have to first know yourself in order to help yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's in really any aspect of life, but like, especially in something where you're uncomfortable, you're learning, in an environment where you're meant to struggle in order to succeed, you have to know how to cope with that and how to help yourself do the best that you possibly can. Yeah. Um, I think that I was always so scared to ask my teachers for help. And then last year, I like struggled a lot with school and I started asking them for help, and every single one of my teachers that I reached out to helped me in every single way I wanted them to. It was so nice to feel like I had a community at school, even with that being teachers. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, um, just when I was struggling, like, they understood, and they didn't want me to do bad, obviously, and the fact that I went up to them and was honest with how I was doing, how I was struggling, it made them understand and want to help me more. Yeah. It made them, like, have empathy for me. And, like, I'm, I wasn't, like, trying to get them to, like, not give me any work, obviously, but I told them, I was like, hey, I really care about this class. I want to do well. I'm struggling a little bit. Can you please help me? Like, yeah. is there anything that we can do so that I still do well? And all of them are like, yes, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, we will figure this out. We can do it. You know? I feel like, and I certainly don't practice what I preach, but at the end of the day, I don't feel like teachers aren't villains. They, they're they literally working a job just as we are technically working a job, mm -hmm. trying to understand this information. So they're not going to, like, kick you to the curb for no reason. Um like, I feel like teachers, they want you to reach out because 
they don't want you to just be a face in their class. Mm -hmm. I think that was a major issue in virtual learning that messed with the motivation of teachers of as soon as we were at home, it was just you. There was no more. No, no video. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know. Talking into a screen. That is a whole different aspect, but like they don't want to kick you to the curb. They don't want you to be left in the dust. And so like it is kind of a two-way street of understanding when you see students struggling as a teacher and reaching out to them as much as it is students being willing to accept the help and also reach out if they need it. Because I know a lot of students who just like refuse to communicate with their teachers and it's just like you know, if you're not going to do that, then you can't really expect things to change. It, yeah, it definitely is a hard thing, like, reaching out and letting someone know that you're vulnerable at the moment, but it is the, really the best thing to do, I feel like, because you show your vulnerability, and then you have more than just one person helping you pick yourself back up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think that just as much as teachers have had an impact on me, I think we have an impact on them as well. Oh, and totally. helping each other and working together and communicating and having like friendships or relationships with them that are healthy and strong mm -hmm. and bonded together is going to help everyone. It's going to make everyone want to be here. It's going to make everyone do better, want to succeed. And... Your teacher would probably be nicer to you. If, if you're going to mess around all class, obviously they're not going to have as much patience with you. Yeah. You know, school is for you to learn. And obviously you should still make it fun, but there's a time to have fun and there's a time to do work. Yeah. And you really need to find the balance in order to be on everyone's good side and not even really be on everyone's good side, but just do. Like, just figure it out yeah you know I love a good banter with teachers I love because I hate that weird power dynamic between teachers and students where it's just you know I'm the adult so yeah. I'm going to teach you this information and then you take it and then we test and then you die you know <laughs> yeah but um there is a moment where you do where you're like ha 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 inside joke and then I don't know you watch the PowerPoint that they're presenting on. Like, there, ha there has to be a balance. Um, but going to talk to teachers, some people, I feel, I think they think it's too deep. Because as much as it's true about vulnerability, it also, like, you know, I feel like people just take it too seriously. Like, I don't want to know people that are, I don't want people to know that I'm struggling. And like, I don't want my teachers to know, your teachers know. They, yeah. they have to be the ones who are putting it in the grade book, you know? And it's, I feel like taking it so deep is only pushing you back from. Hurting yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's just hurting yourself and you can't, it, it just makes it harder to go out and get that help. But once you kind of break that barrier and break that thought process, when you get up and you you ask, like, hey, can you go over this lesson again? Can you explain this in simpler terms? You know, maybe, is it possible that we can add something to maybe next lesson that's like a recap of what we did or something? Um, you know... Teachers aren't going to be able to completely change their lesson plans, mm -hmm. but asking for a small thing, hey, can we recap, or, you know, is there possibly a video that we could watch, or maybe is there, like, a picture you can kind of explain or for something, you know, I find that really helps with, like, science classes and mm -hmm. math classes, um, you know, small things teachers are totally willing to do if they know that it will aid the majority of the class or just you, you know. Um, even with, like, like reaching out to a teacher, if you don't want to do it in person, just email them, you know. If you just emailed them and said, 
hey, I've been kind of struggling with your class, and I would like for a little extra help. I was wondering if you could maybe talk to me after class about rearranging something or whatever. Then you don't even have to do it in person, and it gives you that state where you can kind of say whatever you like, and you can look over it, and you don't have to make it emotional. You don't have to be super vulnerable. Struggling is a very common thing. Yep. In school, and work, and life, and everything. It's very common, and it's impossible for you to never struggle. It's impossible for you to know everything and to just understand everything. It's not how the world works. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody fails. And it's just inevitable. So you, like how you said, if you just keep pushing it away, it's hurting yourself only. Mm -hmm. I also think on top of emailing teachers to explain stuff, um, you can, as long as you don't abuse this power, mm -hmm. you can always ask, hey, can I have another day? Because I swear when I was virtual junior year, a lot of times during pre-calc, I would just email my teacher and be like, hey, I had some stuff going on in the house, or like, I had a bunch of construction work, so and it was always during pre-cal class, and I was like, hey, like I literally can't do this. Like, Can you just give me another day? Most teachers are going to be like, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking it slow or needing more time, and I don't think, I don't think that should be penalized. And as much as due dates are kind of like, they're there for a reason, um, I, most teachers are super flexible. I've also had classes where it's like, you know, as long as you get it in before the week of finals, mm -hmm. you're fine. But that's mostly your elective classes, mm -hmm. you know. Or like even before the unit's over. Like before you take the test. Exactly. That still gives you weeks, yep. you know. Um, I, I agree. And I think that if you truly want to do well, you are the only person that can give you those experiences or those, you can, you can only give yourself those opportunities, yeah. I guess. And like, if you want to do well, sometimes you have to put in the extra work. And I think that a lot of people aren't willing to do that. But if, I mean, you just have to, I don't yeah. know what else to say. Um, like AIP is a perfect time. You're already here in school. Just do your work. Mm -hmm. Like, instead of sitting on your phone or talking to friends, like, you can do both, but do your work, you know? You have to learn to divvy up your time. Because mm -hmm. I've had, especially, I think, your early years, you want to set that foundation of just getting your work done in AIP. Mm -hmm. And then as you become, like, an upperclassman, you can kind of, you, by that time, you already know yourself. And, yeah. you know, mm, if I don't do this homework in AIP, then I'm definitely just going to have to do it at home. And sometimes you have to take that sacrifice because there's been moments where after my second class of the day, I am just, like, so emotionally drained or, like, academically drained that I'm like, okay, I do just need to sit on my phone for, like, 40 minutes and chill. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I still know that I'm going to put the work in after school at some point. Right. And do, and I feel like not a lot of kids have that yet, or they don't understand that that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, shoot, I was going to say something. Oh, um, so when I was struggling with school, I, I don't think that I was really – truly applying myself because you know like sometimes you just can't you know and you have to kind of focus on other things I guess but it would make me feel so stupid mm -hmm. all the time like I would just think that I wasn't good enough for school like I, I wasn't good enough to have an education I wasn't smart enough to do well I wasn't all these things and like now when I truly apply myself and try and work hard in school 
like, my grades were probably, like, oh, my God, they were, like, all, every single grade I got this year was, like, two to three levels higher than Mm -hmm. any of the grades I got last year, and it's, like, how does that happen? It's literally just by trying. I got A's and B's in classes that I would have gotten C's in, you know? Yep. And... I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely taking easier classes this year, but it's still work that I'm doing. Oh, yeah. And it's still things that I'm trying in and things that I'm giving effort towards. Yeah. I I think the... And we just keep on saying this, and it's also true. It's about knowing yourself, knowing your limits, knowing your boundaries, mm-hmm. knowing how to get the help that you know that you need specifically. Um, I... I didn't take, I was supposed to take uh, college algebra this year, but after one class, I was just like, no, I can't. Me too. I no, I can't <laughs> Me do too. it. Me too. Um, but, I mean, I was just so burnt out mm-hmm. after pre-calc that I was like, I need one year or whatever. I'll figure it out in college. You know, I just need one year where I don't have to, you know, do math yeah and my mom at one point was like oh no reason there are no way like the reason why you're not sad is because you're taking a math class <laughs> like she's like you your mood is so much better because yeah. you're not taking it and I was like you know what that is so true and unfortunately for you know underclassmen that's not necessarily an option that you can take but it's something that you can definitely look forward to and you know if you know that you can't do calculus or you can't do college algebra you know there's no reason for you to like not take integrated math or something like it's okay to go a step below what is deemed the best Mm -hmm. because you know your limits, and if you know that you can still do a math class, but it's not going to be, you know, slaving every night to do, you know, like a flipped classroom, do all these notes, or do like 60 questions in two days, go you. <laughs> like, not some people, I have so many friends who are just completely, like, in a detrimental mood because mm-hmm. they are having to put so much effort that they don't have into classes. I, yeah, I didn't take, I was going to take college algebra, but then I didn't. I was like, this is too much for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I already had four credits in math because I doubled up with algebra two and geometry my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the best idea ever, but I mean, we did it. We're here. So I'm graduating. That's all that matters to me. Um, But... I took integrated math last year, and it was actually really enjoyable. Like, it was it was good for, um, like, problem solving, and, like, we talked about inflation, which I thought was really helpful to me. Um, we did all kinds of math. It was, like, geometry, trigonometry, algebra. It was basically everything. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed that because I felt like I was still using that part of my brain and still getting the knowledge of math and, like, understanding how to problem solve in not just, like, a math way, but, like, also, like, thinking outside of the box. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, like, super hard algebra that I was doing, you it know? Was at your own pace. Yeah, for sure. And it was, um, it was, yeah, it was really enjoyable to me because I had, like, a couple friends in there, and Mrs. Core, she's a great teacher, and she would let us work on stuff after our lessons and it was just she would help us she was a really good teacher she helped you understand always which was really really helpful environment is crucial yeah for sure but yeah I really like Mrs. Core. if you have her for a math class you be nice to her because (laughs) she's a sweet she's a sweetheart so kind of similar to math Mm -hmm. is science classes and 
Uh, there's so many paths that you can take, and I only know the path that I did take. You know, some kids, their freshman year, they go into honors bio, and they just skip physical science entirely. Some kids just go into physical science. Some choose to do bio, too. Some choose, I mean, I know that you have to do, or for the most part, you're doing, like, chemistry, you're doing bio, you're doing, yeah. um, there's also physics. Yeah, there's also the PLTW classes. Yep. Which are like kind of their own thing, but that's still like a science category. And forensic science mm-hmm. and um, environmental science, which I wanted to take, but it didn't fit my schedule, and I'm so mm-hmm. sad. But um, what classes did you take in science? I took. So I started with honors bio, and then I did honors chem. And then I did one semester of honors physics, and then I got a B, and then I dipped because <laughs> it, that was also my virtual year, and it was, you know, it just wasn't my style of science. Mm-hmm. I come from a family that is very much into biology. My sister has a biology degree. Mm-hmm. She works at the science center. We're very much, you know, like an animals family. And, you know, learning how a car goes broom isn't necessarily, which is totally not what physics is entirely, but, like... It's definitely more on, like, gravity and yeah, Earth and type that's, of forces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do miss... I wish that we had, like, an Earth science class again, because the last time we took that was in eighth grade, and I would love to go more in-depth about mm-hmm. things, but... Um, And then after that one semester of physics, I just took forensic science. And then now I'm in AP Bio. Um, So going back to what I love and what I know definitely helps um, with, like, motivation and also, like, knowing your boundaries again. Um, You know, it is, like, if you find a type of science that you like, you know, that's like a hit and run. Just like go do those classes that you like. Um, you know, that's why I wanted to do environmental science because that also is kind of in the realm of like animals and conservation yep. and, you know, like actual ecosystems and all that. So if you end up liking chemistry, okay, you take honors chem or you take normal chem, you can take AP chem or maybe you can find. You know, if you like forensic science, then you can do a PLTW class because mm-hmm. I know that they they also do crime investigation type things. The amount of times I've walked into class and I've just seen like a mannequin on the floor with like fake blood. Mm-hmm. It's always so funny, but like those that hands on moment where you have to like analyze blood splatter and all this stuff, like that You know, if you really enjoy it, like, those classes are definitely going to be so up your alley. I loved the fingerprint unit we did. That was my all-time favorite. I thought it was so cool. Um, But I definitely, if you, so you need three credits of um, science to graduate. Um, so if you wanted, like, an extra one but didn't want to, like, do a whole year or you didn't want to do, like, a super hard class, I would definitely go for forensics. Yeah. Because I took that last semester, and I felt like it was really easy, and you just had to pay attention. Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of time to complete your work. You had a lot of time to do your work. I don't know. It's just, it was a good class to just kind of slowly go at your own pace and kind of hit every milestone that you wanted to go to. And then you got an addiction to watching Forensic Files on Netflix. Yeah. No, yeah, like, you watch so (laughs) many episodes, and I just, like, started watching them at home, and then I was like, hmm, this is making me feel terrible about life, and I had to stop. When I was little, I used to watch Forensics um, all the time. And I saw this one where, like, this girl had her ear ripped off. (gasps) And for years and years and years and years afterwards, I had to sleep with my cover over my ear (laughs) on my side. I'm so serious. I probably did it until, like, high school, like, freshman, sophomore year. Because I don't know why. It was just, like, and then it became a reflex, and I just had to do Mm -hmm. it. Otherwise, I was, like, the monsters are going to get me. Yeah. 
Um, but I took physical science, honors biology, and then chemistry, and then I did horrible in chemistry. That was the year that I had a lot of classes going on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And so I actually swapped out of it at second semester. And I'm taking chemistry now, and it is so much better. Because I now have like the effort or like the mind power, the mind energy yeah, yeah. <laughs> to like actually do it. And I think that chemistry is definitely one of those classes that you need to focus on in your schedule for sure. Um, I think that almost everyone struggles with chemistry. It's just one of those classes where it's very It's a hard diverse. subject. Yeah, it is. It's just... It's taking science and then developing it on a whole new level that we've never even really talked about before. Like, yeah. with the periodic table, like, that was my first year really, like, actually going into it. Besides, like, in middle school, we were like, these are whatever, you know? Yeah. And so I think that, I think that switching it for my senior year helped me because it gave me a schedule that... I was capable of working with and that I was capable of doing well in instead of just trying to pack in all these hard classes. Um, I spaced it out and it actually helped me in the end of it. So, mm-hmm. Also talking to your counselor is a great way to help yourself. Um, they are really willing to work with you and really willing for you to do the best that you can. And so setting up a good schedule at semesters is really important if you need to change. Yep. Like, don't just stick it out if you really don't want to. Like, there's always going to be another opportunity or another option for you to take. And as sad as some teachers might be, you know, they also understand your own boundaries. Mm-hmm. So, you know, dipping out of class shouldn't shouldn't be as stigmatized as it is. For sure. And people don't ha- just have issues with main classes like your core classes it's elective classes too because I was in personal finance last semester and I know some people did struggle with keeping on time and I don't I know that there's multiple teachers who teach it but I had Gephardt personally and he was always very you know lax when it comes to like the due dates and stuff but Um, it's one of those classes where it's like, it feels like an elective, but you need that class to graduate. Like, um, so you have to take it kind of seriously and, you know, try to, I mean, it's finances. It's hard. I don't understand money. I don't. Yeah, no. Me either. I had Freeman and he was, he was a good teacher for it, but it is just one semester class and you don't want to take it again. You just don't, because, like, it is, like, very hard, and it is a little boring, just because it is about, like, things that we can't even do yet. Yeah. But it's it's knowledge that we need, and it's very important for when we go out into the world, like, after we graduate, because financial literacy is important. Yeah. And the more that you don't know, the more that you're going to get screwed over by people who do know what they're doing. For sure. And... Like, you know how everyone's like, I'm never going to use this algebraic equation Mm -hmm. in my life. That's something that you are going to use. You know what I'm saying? So just do it. I mean, like, I feel like, I don't really remember much of it, but I feel like I definitely learned a good amount from it. Yeah. I feel like, um, I mean, it's definitely the first steps of kind of dipping your toes into learning how money works. Um, I wish that we did kind of focus more on the, like, legitimate how do you open up a checkings and savings account, because I know when I went with my dad to my bank, I was like, I let him take over the controls, because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here, I barely step into a bank in the first place, but like, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm 18 now, I'm about to start, you know, like, working a job, like, it's gonna, I'm gonna have to start figuring it out. And the more that you let yourself actually absorb the information, the better that you're going to be. Yep. So my advice for personal finance is just pay attention. Also, don't let it be your last class of the day. Because 
that is what messed me up because it was my last class and I was just tired and I was drained so I didn't want to pay attention in the first place yeah the placement of your classes also matters and I want to talk about that real quick because I have learned the past two years that I really want to have an ACK lab as my first class to not only have myself wake up more for my next classes so then I can do the homework that I might have due that day that it just gives me a bit of a buffer Mm -hmm. so that I can get stuff done instead of having to do stuff outside of class. It's literally a second AIP, but instead of, like, 50 minutes, it's now, like, a 90-minute class where you can wake up, do homework, chill. And it doesn't have to be an act lab. You you do the same stuff if you're a guidance aide, if you're, you know, an office aide. If you just have a free class, it would help you tremendously. Yeah. Last semester, I had... I would go in the library for one block because I had teacher aid, and then I would go to Harden for Sam's class on the other day, and I didn't do anything either way, and so my homework was always done. Yep. I didn't have anything when I went home because I used my time wisely, and I just did it while I was still at school. Because I didn't have, I was so bored, I was like, I need something to do. I remember, like, so many times I was like, I need more homework. Like, I don't have anything to do here, and it's so annoying and frustrating. Yeah. And, like... But that's just me personally, so... yeah. If you know that you don't want to take a math class your first block, and you also don't want to take a math class your second block, sometimes that's kind of how... (sighs) you have to navigate what type of math class you are because if you're on the fence of taking one one subject and then you get to a point where they tell you what hour um the class is in and then you're like oh no I cannot do it first block or ninth block then you might just have to say I'm just not going to take that class because that's knowing yourself you're either going to be trying to wake up Or you're going to, you know, literally holding your head trying not to fall asleep in class. Because I remember when I had Algebra 2, that was my very last class on A-Days when I had a bunch of other core classes. And I swear, I, when we did notes, I was falling asleep so easily. And that was every single class, and that made class just so much harder. So finding the sweet spot of putting your classes together in a way that you know that your brain can handle is also very important. I Yeah, I agree. And I think that the hardest classes you have, this is how I would put it, like if I would have known better, especially I know some people can't help it because like for juniors, like they have a lot of hard classes. They don't just have one or two. But I would do uh, my third and fourth block, my hardest classes, Yep. Because it's the second period of the day, and you're just ready to go, I feel like. That's, like, the perfect time right before AIP, so then if you need extra help, you can just go right after. Um, and then I would do our lunch block, sixth and seventh block, as my second hardest class. Yeah. Because you need to put them in the middle of the day, because in the morning you're tired, and then in the afternoon you're tired. Yep. Like... Ninth block and eighth block are probably more like PEs, foods, child development, like things like that. And then your first block should be, it depends on what type of person you are. So like if you need a PE class to wake up, then I would do that. If you need to just sit and do work or whatever, do an act lab. If you need to read or like write then do English you know yeah you can you can have one of your core classes like at the end of the day you're probably gonna have to have your core classes in one of those first block ninth block spots that's just kind of how you know luck goes right but you know if you can pick you know between like history or science like which one do you want to do like in the morning and that's just based on your brain you know we keep on reiterating this is all about knowing yourself, knowing your boundaries, knowing your limits. And it takes that kind of self-reflection in order to do, like, sign-ups for classes. Yeah. I feel like we are just, like, 
kind of beating a dead horse with like saying know yourself, but I really do believe that that's why people struggle so much is because they're not focusing on what's best for them. You know, they're just trying to get through it, which I totally understand. But at the same time, like you need to care about yourself enough and care about your future or life or whatever you want to call it enough to work hard for things and believe that you deserve the best that you can get. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of us, I feel like, don't think of that. Like they don't believe in that, which I totally understand. Like everyone hits those ruts. Everyone goes through it. But you need to stay consistent with getting your mental state at a good place to just learn. Mm -hmm. Just do what you have to do. That is really part of it. It's just working through it, you know, fake it till you make it. But you really need to understand that that's also with caring about yourself. That also goes back to reaching out for help, mm -hmm. like understanding that you deserve to have help. Like you are worth it. You are important. You need to do well. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you take the time to create a schedule that works for you and you learn those like coping skills of how to deal with the hard classes you will find that when you set up all these things to help you that when you're struggling you're not going to struggle as much than if you were to make a schedule that doesn't fit you or you don't know how to reach out for teachers you are going to be struggling far more than you would ever expect so like it's almost like you in the present are helping your future self for when they have rough times and looking out and it's literally looking out for yourself have you ever seen those tiktoks and it's like if you if like the mini you was sitting in front of you what would you say to them what would you say to that little kid because yeah. it wouldn't be the negative things you say to yourself when i saw that i was like mind blown yes because I never thought of it that way and like it's the truth like you don't deserve that you know like I think that us as a whole society and community need to understand that we are in charge of the world once we grow up like we are the big dogs if yeah. that makes sense like it's in our control we hold the future in our hands and I want to have a good future. I'm sorry if you don't, but I want to have a good one, and I think that we should all do that together. Yeah, because when you look out for yourself, you are also kind of looking out for others, mm -hmm. you know, because um, people worry about you. You can think all that you want, that you're some kind of loner wolf <laughs> type of person, but that's just not true. There's people who, you know... Not side glance you in the hallway like a bad thing, but they acknowledge your existence. Everybody knows that you exist. There's people who I've never had a conversation with in the hallway, but I do notice them. Like, you are there, mm -hmm. you know? And if you take care of yourself, you know, that is easing the conscience of everybody else. And that's not to be like, don't burden yourself when you, or don't feel like a burden when you're down. Everybody gets down. But you know, taking care of yourself is a, is a reminder to everybody else to also take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's less academic and that's more social. But I, you know, academics and social life are literally intertwined. Mm -hmm. That's just what, like, humanity is. Yeah, I think, like, find compassion, find empathy, find kindness, find, like, caringness, like... Just find all the love that you can get and just give it away. Because the, the better you feel about yourself, the better you're making other people feel. And I think that that's a win-win. Yep. 100%. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Crow's Nest. We hope you have a decadent day. <laughs> and as always, go, go get them, pirates! pirates.